Okay. I'm going to give an update on the IVI production uh, readiness expert group just to give you some background. Um, the uh, production readiness expert group was proposed um, maybe, I, don't, I think it was about two years ago by Toyota and is currently led by Dadasan of Toyota, who's uh, also, I guess, a member of the Woven Planet team, uh, which is a subsidiary of Toyota working on a lot of their advanced software. Um, so I'm borrowing a lot of uh, slides from Dadasan, who could not make it today. Um, basically, you know, the 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 motivation for creating the expert group was that OEM adoption of AGL has been slow. In in 2017, Toyota announced that, that they were using it in their Camry. We uh, in the CES booth uh, for AGL showed a, a Camry uh, one year in the booth. We had a, a RAV4 another another year in the booth, um, and then. So we, we've shown a variety of uh, Toyota products that are have uh, a, 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 the initial version of some of the one of the initial versions of AGL running in it. In uh, June of 2018, Daimler announced they were going to use it in their commercial vehicle prototype development. And then in 2020, Subaru announced they were adopting AGL software uh, for their infotainment on their 2020 uh, Outback and Legacy products. Um, AGL, like Dan said, AGL membership continues to grow, but product, product adoption is still low. Um, so how could, uh, OEMs like Toyota, um, move uh, the needle on IVI and getting it into production for different OEMs? So they created this, uh, product, product readiness activity to fill that gap between AGL and, uh, OEM products. And if you're familiar with how OEMs are typically structured, there's usually a R&D team, um, and there's usually a production team, and and some and you know sometimes it's very difficult to get those um, technologies, those new technologies, into the product teams at some of the OEMs, depending on how they're structured. And so they wanted to, you know, Toyota sees that and understands that. Uh, and they wanted to figure out how they can convince their product teams to adopt AGL faster, as well as convincing other OEMs to adopt it. So some of the highlights over the last few years of the expert group, uh, Toyota donated uh, their base system and has done some updates to it. And that's been included since the Kuki Koi release. Uh, Denso did a lot of work on uh, the rules-based um, architecture uh, and that was included uh not included included uh in the koi release they toyota worked on a initial version of the product readiness a product readiness specification that's available um the flutter embedder like we said before is already available in the magic marlin ucb release that was uh created by a, a version created by toyota and uh, maintained by toyota um, and new features, we're working with them on the roadmap as part of this expert group. New features from Toyota will be included in the Needlefish release and in Octopus. And at the workshop last week, uh, we continue to discuss what those new features would be. Um, for example, the current version of the Flutter Embedder only supports a single app running at a time. Um, and Needlefish will bring in the ability to run multiple concurrent apps. Um, but we also we also start going going over a list of requirements for the reference apps and what we would uh, what we would want to be able to demonstrate what we'd want to be able to make available to people. And uh, Toyota is taking that list and uh, coming back with some more updates to their roadmap over the next few weeks. And our goal is to create these uh, reference apps and have them shown at CES next year and available in the optimistic octopus release in uh, in February of next year. So what is the product readiness profile? So 
the idea is that there would be uh, the existing IVI profile and the instrument cluster profile would exist in parallel with this product readiness profile. Uh, so this is what this was the uh, this was the place where they put the um, <clears throat> the Toyota base system and the uh, some of the flutter stuff and the flutter and better and then we could pick and choose you can see over here i don't know if my my mouse shows up but you, you we could pick and choose which ones to merge into the ivi profile and the instrument cluster profile i mean one of the great things is uh, we have a lot of different um a lot of different um builds available and different profiles and configurations available off the shelf in AGL. And uh, one thing we, one issue we have, or one, you know, one problem that we have that we're trying to address is um, you may say, well, well, Walt, what is this production readiness profile? I've never actually seen this talked about anywhere. Um, so we talked in the um, face to face workshop last week about how we can address, you know, what these profiles are, what what their audience is, what the requirements are, um, you know, who they're intended for, and so the system architecture team is is going to start working on an update to the system spec and really kind of take that system spec that's existing and pull it up a level um, and create more of a, an overall um, system specification that describes each of these profiles and what you know, what they're intended to be used for and what the images look like and things like that. So the idea is that this product readiness profile will be better described in that document as we go along. Um, and then basically that from that product readiness profile and from the IC or IVI profile, you the OEM or the tier one would be able to pull that into their software and make that available for their production teams. Um, so this is, you know, and, and the way we would do that or the way they would be able to, you know, show to demonstrate to their internal teams that it's ready is we would not only have this software available, but like Jan Simon was showing, we would have a, a complete set of test cases. We'd be able to duplicate those test cases and show them running on hardware and uh, hopefully hardware that's close to something that they would be interested in using uh, by using our AGL reference hardware. So this you can see this is where it all it'll everything kind of comes together uh, in terms of getting these getting both the instrument cluster and the IVI, but especially in this case IVI into into production systems. Um, so how can you help? Um, well, we really need other OEMs to participate. Um, you know, Toyota has participated, Mazda has participated a little bit. Um, but we need other OEMs to participate in the requirements gathering and reviews of those requirements and what's important to each OEM um, and what's and also what's not important to each OEM. Um, you know, we've learned in some cases that we've gone off and written uh, software that nobody's really interested in. So uh, we, we want to avoid doing that. <clears throat> so we need other OEMs and, and tier ones for that matter to participate in the requirements gathering and reviewing of those requirements. Ideally, we'd get some tier ones and OEMs to donate more code and help us with integration. <clears throat> Ideally, that'd be code that's in production that AGL can adopt. And, um, you know, some examples that we've had discussions with tier ones and OEMs about donating uh, a speech rec API over the years about donating a telephony API or a, a radio API that's already in production. How can we take those, can we take those and, and adopt those into AGL? <clears throat> um, it would also be great if uh, tier ones and OEMs could disclose to us which open source projects or what open source projects are out there that they're adopting internally. Um, can AGL then help step up and work with those open source projects? Um, that's how we got involved with Elisa very heavily. You'll hear an Elisa update after uh, I'm complete here, after I'm done here from uh, Kate and uh, Stuart and from Philip Allman. And AGL has been participating and working with the, the automotive working group. And we were, we were key in getting that automotive working group adopted by the, by the Elisa project. So, what open source projects are out there that you guys are interested in 
and are considering adopting internally and how can AGL work to get that code integrated into our UCB um, and work with that open source projects. And then finally, engineers from OEMs and tier ones participating in the IVI expert group and other expert groups. I mean, you're gonna hear from uh, Panasonic in a few minutes about virtualization and all the work that Panasonic's been doing there um, to develop that, eight, you know, basically engineers from those companies uh, helping to develop the platform, helping to develop reference apps, helping to develop services. Um, over the years, we've had some great engineers who've worked with us, um, including you just heard from uh, Yamaguchi-san and Kurokawa-san. Uh, we've had others, you know, from Panasonic, from um, from Denso, from a lot of different OEMs and tier ones that have helped contribute code and helped advance the software. Um, so it would really be great if we could see some more participation from from OEMs and tier ones, especially. Um, so there's a, a number of uh, slides here on Flutter. Um, since we're a little behind time and I am not an expert on Flutter, um, I will leave you th these. I will. Th these are uploaded, these slides, to the schedule site already. Um, but I think the important thing is you can... There's a few videos here that are referenced. Uh, you can see the Toyota activities in action. Uh, you can see some of the work that they've already done. Uh, I'd highly recommend going and looking for their uh, presentation from Automotive Linux Summit. Some of this presentation is adopted from, from that presentation. Um, <clears throat> and um, really, uh, this is kind of the status they've, uh, you know that they've that they've got and how to find their uh, Flutter and better on GitHub and uh, an an, arc, an overview of of what they're doing. But basically, the key thing is they're only replacing the bottom layer of the embedder and fl of Flutter's techn Flutter's technology stack. So the framework and the engine uh, are used as is. Um, the embedder is really that specific, very platform specific piece that's being developed by them for AGL and for their internal use in parallel. So that's the great thing is they're they're creating this uh, both for AGL and you know working working in the open with us and working internally to get this into their products. Um, <clears throat> so. Um, I'm going to keep it short. Um, thank you very much. And um, I'll hand it back over to Dan.